In this video, we're going to do a question on probability. Now, I like to think of probability as the game of chance. So nothing is certain. The question says, the following number disc were placed in a bag. We have 57, 59, 75, 79, 95, and 97. Then it goes on to say, one disc is chosen at random. What is the probability that the number for part A is 59? So let's understand what this question is asking us. So it says the following numbered discs were placed in a bag. So think of it as, you know, a piece of paper, you write down a number, they put it in a bag, right? And it says one disc is chosen at random. So you have these different discs in a bag and you choose one at random without looking. They want to know what is the probability or what is the chance that the number is going to be 59. Well, there's a formula we use for probability and that's going to be number of possible outcomes over number of total outcomes. I'm going to write it on the side. So we have number of possible outcomes over number of total outcomes. So using this information, let's look at part A. They want us to find the probability that the number we chose is 59. So the first thing we should do is find out the number of total outcomes by adding all of the disks. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the number of total outcomes can be 6. And that's going to go in the denominator, by the way. And for the number 59, we can see that number only appears one time. Therefore, we're going to write 1 in the numerator. Therefore, the probability of choosing 59 is going to be 1 over 6. So for part B, it says start with 9. So let's look back up at the disk. Does 57 start with 9? No. Does 59? No. Does 75? No. 79? No. Does 95 start with 9? Yes. So we're going to write 1 over 6. Does 97 start with 9? Yes. So we're going to say plus 1 over 6. And when we add this, we know we're adding fractions, so we're going to look at the denominator. We can see we have the same denominator, so we're just going to write it back and add the numerators. We have 1 plus 1. Therefore, when we solve for this, 1 plus 1 is going to give us 2 over 6. Now, you can write the probability as 2 over 6, but I want you to notice something. This probability is not in its lowest terms. Because we have the fraction 2 over 6, we know the numerator and the denominator are both even numbers. Therefore, they are divisible by 2. So when you reduce the fraction 2 over 6, we know 2 can go into 2 one time and 2 can go into 6 three times. Therefore, we're left with the probability of 1 over 3. This is going to be our answer. So in the space provided, we're just going to write 1 over 3. Now for part C, it says it's between 30 and 55. So they want us to find the probability of choosing a number between 30 and 55. Is 57 between 30 and 55? No. What about 59? No, that is greater. What about 75? No. 79? No, 95, no, 97, no. Therefore, there is no way we can choose a number between 30 and 55. So the number of possible outcomes is going to be 0 over the number of total outcomes, which is going to be 6. Now for part D, we have is a multiple of 5. So we know if they want us to find a multiple of 5, to be a multiple of 5, it has to end in either a 0 or a 5. Let's look at our numbers. Does this end in either a 0 or a 5? 
No, so this is not a multiple of 5. What about 59? Well, 59 ends in 9, therefore this is not a multiple of 5. What about 75? Well, 75 ends in 5, therefore it is a multiple of 5. Therefore, I'm just going to write 1 over 6. And that, was, and that was for the number 75. Now, what about 79? Is 79 a multiple of 5? No. What about 95? Well, we know 95 ends in 5, therefore it is a multiple of 5. So we're just going to write plus 1 over 6. Now, what about 97? Is 97 a multiple of 5? No, it is not. So we end up with two possibilities. And those two possibilities are 75 and 95. And now let's solve for this. So because we're adding fractions, and we know the first thing we're going to do is look at our denominators, because they are the same, we can just write 1 plus 1. So we're just adding the numerators and writing back our denominator, which is 6. 1 plus 1 is going to give us 2 over 6. But once again, this fraction is not in its lowest terms. It can be reduced further. We know that because we have two even numbers, 2 and 6. Therefore, we know we can reduce 2 over 6 because 2 can go into 2 one time and 2 can go into 6 three times. Therefore, our answer is going to be 1 over 3. We're just going to write it in the space provided. We have 1 over 3. Now for part E, it says has the digit 7. So they want us to find the probability of choosing a number at random that has the digit of 7. Does the number 57 have a digit of 7? Yes, it does. Therefore, we're just going to mark it. What about 59? Well, 59 does not contain a digit of 7 because 5 and 9 are the two digits. Now, what about 75? Well, we have a 7 and we have a 5. Therefore, the number 75 contains 7 as a digit. We're just going to mark it. Now, what about 79? Yep, we can see 79 has 7 as a digit. 95? No, 95 does not have 7 as a digit. Now, what about the number 97? Well, we see 97 has two digits. It has a 9 and a 7. Therefore, it does have 7 as a digit, so we're just going to mark it. Therefore, for the number of possible outcomes, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm just going to add it. So we can say we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 over the total number of outcomes, which is going to be 6. Now, 1 plus 1 is going to give us 2. 2 plus 1 is going to give us 3, and 3 plus 1 is going to give us 4. Therefore, we end up with the probability of 4 over 6. Now, before we put this as our answer, let's make sure it is in its lowest terms. Well, we see we have the probability of 4 over 6, but it is not in its lowest terms because these are two even numbers. And because these are two even numbers, they are both divisible by 2. Therefore, we can write this as 4 over 6, we know 2 can go into 4 2 times, and 2 can go into 6 3 times. So our probability, when written in its lowest terms, is going to be 2 over 3. This is going to be our answer. Let's write it in the space provided. We have 2 over 3. Now finally, for our last question, it says is less than 100. So they want us to find the probability of choosing a number that is less than 100. Let's erase this. Is 57 less than 100? Yes, it is. So we're just going to mark it. What about 59? We know 59 is less than 100. 75? Yes, that's true. 79? Yeah, that's also less than 100. 95? Yeah, that's smaller than 100 too. What about 97? Yes, that's actually smaller than 100. Therefore, we can see all of the numbers are going to fit the number of possible outcomes. Now, anytime you have a situation like this, you're going to see something that happens. 
So because all of the numbers fit the number of possible outcomes, we can write this as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 over the number of total outcomes, which is going to be 6. And when we add 1 plus 1, that's going to give us 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And 5 plus 1 is 6. We get the probability of 6 over 6. But pay close attention. This isn't reduced in its lowest form. No, no it's not. Because we have the same numerator and denominator, we can write our probability as 1. Therefore, this is going to be our answer for this problem. We're just going to write 1. So this is how you solve a probability problem anytime they want you to choose a number at random. Just have a good understanding of this equation and you're good to go.